I like that game. It was, was a nice positional win. A4, I'm not so sure. I think that's just more likely to be a weakness than, than not for him. I go bishop a3, just not, not to allow a3. I'll move my, my rook from a1, then this queen side may be in a bit of trouble. Do you want to find out how Magnus Carlsen got a dominating position against Shostakovich? Then stay tuned. Here we go. d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, and now b4. Quickly gaining space on the queen side. Castle e3, d6, bishop b2. Rook e8, knight c3. White has gained space on the queen side very quickly, and it's up to black to react somehow against the queen side expansion or React in the center. Bishop f5, bishop e2, a5, b5. No need to play a3 because after take, 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 perhaps white has ideas to come in with the queen into the position, but b5 keeps more pieces on the board. Knight bd7 is the first mistake from Shostakovich because this allows knight h4. And after knight b6, knight takes f5, g takes castle, Y is slightly better here. E6, protecting f5, but perhaps going d5 next as well. Queen c2, connecting the rooks, maybe rook d1, f3, e4. a4, this pawn is now a weakness, and Magnus plans to capture it in the future. This was something key I learned during this game. Because in a position like this, I might have played a4, and then queen b3, let's say, and then c5. Perhaps that is still better for white, but I did not consider allowing black to play a4 would be good for white. Queen c2, a4, bishop a3. a4, I'm not so sure. I think that's just more likely to be a weakness than, than not for him. I go bishop a3, just not, not to allow a3. I'll move my, my rook from a1, then... This queen side may be in a bit of trouble. Ideas of c5. Quickly gaining space. King h8, rook c1. Hinting at c5 once again. Rook g8. Trying to attack, but it's just too slow. c5. Knight bd5, take, take. Take, take. c file is open. The bishops now have greater potential. Bishop f3. Rook c8, queen a4. Just blundering a pawn. But in such a position, it really looks hopeless. Because if you don't play rook c8, maybe queen d7, you can take on d5. And after take, it looks like queen c7 looks great. And white is coming in. If you go queen b5, white has a variety of pawns he can take. Take on d6, maybe take on f7. Bishop f3, rook c8, the position is looking bad anyway. Gives the pawn. Now what was his idea? Put the rook back and then queen a5. But Magnus now gets another pawn. Temporarily two pawns up. Queen takes a2. But after the queens come off, white can penetrate with the rook. The rook can go to c7. However, first remove the knight on d5. Then rook c7. b7 and f7 are hanging. No counterplay for black. Black hasn't even begun his attack. And that's it. Bishop h6, rook takes f7, game over because f4 will also fall. So his opponent resigned. If bishop e3, maybe this was a tactic he was going for. It doesn't actually work out. Because after rook g2, king h1, the bishop is protecting h2. A nice positional victory from Magnus. In his third Banter Blitz. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to the channel and give the video a like at the same time. Plus, check out all the other videos I know you'll love too. Until next time.